Please welcome the Vice President of Embedded and Edge Computing at NVIDIA, Deepu Tala. Good morning. Impact of computer vision is increasing tremendously across all industries. Billions of cameras are either deployed or are, are being deployed in all sorts of spaces. You take a look at some of these uh, industries, manufacturing, for optical inspection, defect inspection, worker safety, optimizing the flow of goods. Autonomous vehicles, so we have approximately 100 million cars and trucks come in every year. Almost 1.5 billion of these vehicles are on the road today, and most of them will have increased autonomy in the future. So computer vision is going to play a pivotal part. Medical imaging for MRI, CT scans, and cancer detection. Retail stores for self-checkout, for inventory management and heat maps. Public spaces like stadiums for people safety and access control. Smart buildings, employee access control, parking management. Robots for navigation, robots for pick and place, and robots for human machine collaboration. And then you have traffic, transportation hubs, and warehouses. All of these are increasingly using computer vision. The last decade has seen a great progress in computer vision with the advent of deep learning. In 2012, for the first time, we saw AlexNet was using deep learning and beat all conventional computer vision techniques, which were handcrafted features. And then in 2015, for the first time, ResNet achieved superhuman level accuracy for image classification. And in the last five years, we've seen more and more neural networks, amazing ones coming out for both object detection and classification, things like SSD, YOLO, and RCNNs. And recently, transformers are increasingly being used in computer vision, originally designed for speech. In 2018, we released StyleGAN for image modeling in open source, and that continues to be used quite a bit as well. And then one of the hottest topics in computer vision recently has been NERF, neural radiance field. Incidentally, the computer vision pattern recognition conference is happening right now, and I believe there are over 50 research papers on NERF. So NERF essentially takes a few 2D photographs from various camera angles and poses and delivers a 3D, representation, 3D scene representation. And we've at NVIDIA, we've been working on this. We've released what's called instant NERF, which actually speeds this up by a factor of 1,000 times, effectively creating a 3D scene from 2D data in tens of milliseconds. So these are some of the great uh, research works that um, in the last 10 years we've seen in computer vision. Even commercially, you've seen some amazing progress. Amazon Go, the amount of technology that has gone into it with the number of camera sensors in the stores, if any of you actually have the experience to you know, try that out, a lot of, lot of you know, image processing computer vision needs to be done. NVIDIA, NVIDIA Drive, we've been working on autonomous vehicles for several years now, and level two plus Functionality is going to come in a Mercedes-Benz and Jaguar Land Rover vehicles with our software in 2024 and 2025. John Deere has been using computer vision for automating the uh, tractors, if you will, for both uh, you know, without human operation, but also reducing the amount of herbicide that you spray for weeds by an order of a magnitude. And Siemens Healthcare has been using computer vision for uh, oncology radiation. However, we still have a problem. I think we're still within the first inning or the first 10% of this journey. Computer vision deployments with AI is still really in research and big corporations. We still haven't figured out a way to make this democratized where every farm, every manufacturing plant, small, big, doesn't matter, can use computer vision. And so there's a reason why we are not yet you know, seeing the broad deployment of computer vision. And that's for the lack of certain tools. So we, we've been working on these tools uh, at NVIDIA and also with the, working with Amazon on this. And there's four main things that you know, I'd like to touch upon. First is, how do we create AI models efficiently? Second is simulation and digital twins. 
Third is building efficient runtime applications. And fourth is deploying these applications and managing these applications for the whole product life. Now let's double click into each of these blocks uh, briefly. So AI model training. As you all know, AI deep learning requires data, lots of data. And in fact, human label data. Human label data and real world data is necessary, but still not sufficient. Recently, there's been a lot of progress made in the area of synthetic data generation. The advantages of synthetic gener data generation are obvious. First of all, the data comes auto-labeled, right? You can actually randomize the domains, for example, changing the backgrounds or the lighting, and it's super fast to do. So at NVIDIA, we've been building this platform called Omniverse, and one of the features of Omniverse is something called Omniverse Replicator that allows you to generate synthetic data very efficiently. So using a combination of real-world data and synthetic data, we can really speed up uh, the data generation uh, for AI models. Second, the AI model that you come up with is really going to depend on what your starting point is. I'll give you an example. Imagine you're an NBA basketball team, and you're trying to win the championship this year. You're one player shot. Who are you going to select? You're going to probably select somebody who's a five, 10-year player to add versus adding a rookie. Well, unless, of course, you're Magic Johnson, that, 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 that'll be OK. But, but otherwise, you know, the starting point really matters, right? So what we're doing here is building high-quality pre-trained models for various applications in computer vision that you can use as a starting point instead of starting from zero. So start from something like a 70 or 80. And then the last one is taking that model and adapting it to your environment. It is very hard to take any computer vision model and expect it to work in all deployment scenarios. It's actually pretty much an impossibility. So which means you need to have some level of customization. So we've created a toolkit called TAV, stands for Train, Adapt, and Optimize, that uh, you, know, you can use to fine tune your model. So the combination of these three things, we have several hundreds of thousands of customers that are using these technologies to really speed up AI model creation by up to an order of a magnitude. Second, let's talk a little bit about simulation and digital twins. The case for simulation is very elementary. Well, it's simple, I mean, sorry, it's cheap, fast, and safe to do things in simulation. When I was just walking, you know, walking to come to the keynote stage, I, was, I, I saw a huge Funuk robot arm. It was probably 500 pounds or 1,000 pounds with a, you know, the TV stuck to it. Now, in the future, you want, this, you want to have humans and robots collaborate with each other. Now, imagine this. That's a 500 or 1,000 pound of metal. Would you as a human be comfortable experimenting, operating beside it? I certainly would not be that one. So if we can move this to simulation, you can simulate it a million or a billion times. And then once you're sure, you can then bring it into the real world. Now the challenge, with, challenge traditionally for simulation has been there's three things that you need to do to simulate something very well. Number one, the accurate physical world modeling. So you need high performance computing and physics processing. So we're able to do that on our GPUs. Second visual fidelity of the simulation matters in many cases, not all cases. So ray tracing graphics. And third, artificial intelligence running both as hardware in the loop and software in the loop. So we've created NVIDIA Omniverse, essentially is an authoring platform for creating digital twins. Number three, now you created the model, you've simulated it. Now you need to run it on your target device whether it's at the edge or in the cloud, doesn't matter. Well, it turns out, you know, there's a lot of complexity in AI inference, given the number of models and the number of modalities that you need to support. So at NVIDIA, we've been working on this for well over five years, creating libraries and tools for accelerating runtime inference. We have tools such as TensorRT and Triton. And over two million developers from over 20,000 organizations have been using our AI runtime acceleration tools. Now, that's one part of the equation when you're talking about computer vision. A lot of, lot of people actually fall into this pitfall that 
running a computer vision is just about AI inference. No, it's not. You have to, of course, run AI inference fast, but then there's a lot of pre-processing and post-processing that you need to do. So you need efficient runtime frameworks, especially when you look at modern architectures, computing architectures that have CPUs and GPUs and accelerators and video encoders and image signal processors, and, and the number of things that you need to process simultaneously is mind-blowing. So we've created a, a tool for that called DeepStream for optimizing runtime uh, computer vision applications and over 300,000 downloads that we've seen just in the last two years. So combining all of our AI acceleration tools with runtime acceleration for the complete end-to-end -end CV application with DeepStream, we are making it easy for developers to deploy computer vision applications. And then number four, deployment and management. If you think about deploying computer vision into a manufacturing facility or inside a robot, well, that, that robot is going to highly, li it's highly likely to be operating for the next decade, if not more than that. You definitely want to make it smarter over time. So it needs to be updated constantly, right? And it needs to be done in a secure manner. So you need all these software tools that are able to deploy and manage the, all these individual devices, and that takes a lot of frameworks. So there are several frameworks that co companies that are working on. At NVIDIA, we have a tool called Fleet Command. Uh, AWS is working on similar tools. So there's a lot of tools that are necessary for us to deploy computer vision broadly. So those are the four fundamental uh, pillars that are necessary in order to democratize computer vision. Let me touch upon you know, how we are partnering with AWS and NVIDIA in this space. We've been partnered with AWS for several years now, started with uh, providing our GPUs into high performance computing and training. We also have our latest GPUs in the AWS cloud for both inference and graphics application. We've been working with AWS in the area of uh, accelerating all the libraries for machine learning. In fact, SageMaker uses some of our TensorRT uh, and, and Triton tools as well. A couple of years ago, we partnered with AWS in this area of edge AI and computer vision and a product called AWS Panorama. So I want to share with you some of the, some of the success stories as to how AWS and we collectively, by solving those four things that I mentioned earlier, have been able to take computer vision from big, big deployments to taking it into smaller deployments. So four examples here. One is uh, Philips 66. It's basically a gas station. The problem is actually pretty simple. The problem that they're trying to solve is there are you know, attendants, but there are multiple counters. And depending on the heat map, depending on the flow of traffic into that gas station, the, you know, there's a line. Q, the queue length is significant. They can ask one attendant to come in. Or the other one is, is with summer travel coming up. Uh, you know, the restroom cleaning is actually, you know, it's, it's a simple use case, but, you know, sometimes you do it based on every hour, but sometimes depending on the foot traffic, you might have to do it in every 15 minutes. So, so providing simple insights with no data scientists required in any of that. You just plug in a device and it does all the management. Number two, Tyson, chicken. Uh, they had a simple problem to solve. The problem was that I believe each, I'm a vegetarian, so I don't know exactly, but, but I think there's eight pieces of chicken typically in that uh, most people that buy in those things. And they were trying to pack those efficiently, accurately into big pallets. Would you want a human to do that? Sit down and watch the number of things that are going in? That's such a boring job. So using AWS Panorama and using all the accelerated frameworks, the application was able to accurately count and basically make sure that every pallet was exactly the same number as it was intended. Cincinnati Airport, solving again simple problems. Before you go into the airport, one of the biggest problems we have is, at least I have, I'm driving up trying to pick up somebody. There are a few people who are sitting there for like one or two minutes, right? And you, they argue with the security personnel there how long they have been in there. Now with computer vision, you can accurately decide, figure out, exactly you know, what it is and you know, there's no confusion there. And then even after security, the, all the airport operations can be have been automated using, uh, using computer vision. And last, uh, Port of Vancouver. Massive, massive containers are shipped from the Port of Vancouver. Well, 
You can do computer vision, of course, in the port, but they have actually employed computer vision all the way when the container is on the truck way, way behind somewhere, and, it's, and they're going to track it all the way as it enters the, enters the, the port. So these are just some, some of the examples. You can imagine that none of these will have their own data scientists to solve these problems. These are you know, truly getting into the, you know, the, into the common, common areas. And, and basically, that's the future of computer vision. So I think in the next 10 years, we're still in the first inning of this. We have a 10x growth more to go. And it's going, only going to happen if we make this simpler and simpler with all these different tools. With that, I'd like to thank you for your time and hope you all enjoy Vegas. <laughs>